dear students we were discussing homeostasis and we discussed how uh, it starts with the transport how the um, nutrients origin originate in extracellular fluid how it is regulated and finally we were discussing control system in the last lecture we discussed that with the help of heart and blood vessels all the cells all the 100 trillion cells in the human body are being provided with exactly constant level which is uh, maintenance of homeostasis nearly constant level of uh, all the nutrients like so, uh, oxygen sodium potassium magnesium uh, carbohydrates glucose each and everything similarly we discussed that different organs like lungs gastrointestinal system liver kidney were helping the maintenance of the different ion like lungs were lungs were helping in oxygen um, gastrointestinal system was helping in um, supplying the different nutrients like carbohydrates uh, fatty acids amino acids similarly then we discussed that the nervous system and the hormonal system were functioning as the regulators then we discussed the control system and in the control systems we discussed um, uh, we discussed the oxygen and carbon dioxide and the negative feedback system today we will start our um, lecture with the control system and uh, we will discuss another example of a negative feedback mechanism and then we will proceed towards uh, positive feedback and gain of the systems so let's begin with the negative feedback mechanism which is a control system we previously discussed this that a system which reverse the direction of a stimulus reverse the direction we discussed the example of oxygen and carbon dioxide that if the concentration of oxygen is fall is falling then the through the negative feedback mechanism the concentration concentration of oxygen will be restored similarly if the concentration of carbon dioxide is rising then through the negative feedback mechanism the concentration of carbon dioxide will be decreased today we will discuss the same negative feedback mechanism for blood pressure control blood pressure control there are thousands of control systems but we are just um, disc uh, discussing these few important things because they are very very important in everyday life as well as in from the clinical point of view we know that there are a lot of control systems for maintaining blood uh, blood pressure in a constant level the human body must have a blood pressure of 120 by 80 that's an average depends upon the age the kids have a bit low bp and the adults have a bit higher but normally it is maintained with between the 8 120 systolic and 80 diastolic how the human body is trying to maintain nearly constant level of blood pressure in the body there are a lot of control systems but one today which we will discuss is baroreceptor system baro receptor what exactly is baro receptor system 
the human heart it is continuously pumping blood from the heart a big artery known as aorta is arising which is supplying the blood to whole body similarly some branches from aorta are supplying blood to the brain this is the human brain these branches are basically supplying blood to the brain carotid arteries this is the aorta in the arch of the aorta the arch of the aorta and at the bifurcation level of the carotid artery there are some receptors there are some receptors known as baroreceptors baroreceptors when human there is a tone there is a tone a, a specific number of impulses growing going from these receptors a specific number of receptors uh, impulses going from these receptors to the vasomotor center in the medulla of the brain the vasomotor center vaso motor center and from the vasomotor center that is located here in the medulla some impulses are continuously coming into to the heart through sympathetics as well as to the different blood vessels now how these uh, barrow receptors how the heart there is barrow receptors the arteries and the vasomotor center they are coordinating with each other to maintain nearly constant or the blood pressure between 80 and 120 and 80 of diastolic and a 120 of systolic when the blood pressure in the human body rise the barrow receptor gets stretched barrow receptors get stretched and the when they get stretched there is an increase increase in the impulses towards the brain the receptors there is an increase in the impulses going towards the vasomotor center when the increase in the when the increase in the impulse is, is detected by the vasomotor center it will decrease it will decrease the impulses to the heart and the vessels when the impulses from the vasomotor centers are decreased the pumping of the heart decrease and the blood vessels dilate the blood vessels uh, dilate normally when they uh, constrict they are uh, pressing the blood to move forward but when they dilate they pull so the increase in signals due to high bp is being transmitted to the vasomotor center which responds with a decrease in impulses for the heart rate and as well as dilation when the blood vessels get dilated blood is pooled in the vessels when get blood get pooled it is not being pumped easily towards the heart so there is a decrease in the blood coming towards the heart in a sense the blood pressure tends to drop so a high bp a high blood pressure 
it will lead to low blood pressure with the help of baroreceptor system blood pressure tends to increase due to constriction of the blood vessels and increase in the pumping rate of the heart it will stretch the receptors when the baroreceptors get stretched the impulses toward the vasomotor centers will increase when the increase in impulses is detected by the vasomotor centers it will decrease the um, signals towards the heart and the vessels the heart rate will get decreased and the blood vessels in the periphery will get dilated so the blood coming towards the heart it will uh, decrease and the bp will tend to decrease but if the blood pressure tends to decrease if the blood pressure tends to decrease there is very little for example a lot of bleeding is occurring or uh, due to diarrhea or other some other diseases dehydration a lot of fluid is being lost from the human body then the blood coming through the vessels will be detected by the baroreceptors in the arch of the aorta and the bifurcation region of the carotid region and the impulses transmitted the impulses transmitted from these receptors will decrease there will be a decrease in impulses going toward in decrease in impulses going towards the vasomotor center in the middle of the brain when these decrease in impulses from the baroreceptors is detected it will increase the number of impulses it will increase the number of impulses or the signals toward the heart and the vessels when the signals increase it will increase the pumping of the heart and it will constrict it will constrict the blood vessels from the pooling the pooled blood will be pumped it will be pumped towards the heart is the pumping of the heart is increasing and the uh, vessels are also being constricted so the bp is being restored or the amount of blood coming towards the heart is being restored and with um, when the amount of blood coming towards the heart is restored the normal activity of the heart and vessels will be restored so a decrease in bp will result into a restoration of the normal blood pressure restoration of normal blood pressure so here a decrease uh, previously we discussed increase in bp resulted in decrease in bp blood pressure here a decrease in blood pressure results in increase in blood pressure so a decrease is being changed into an increase or the body is trying to maintain nearly constant level through this mechanism and a decrease is being changed into an increase or trying to maintain the nearly constant level of the blood pressure this system is also an example of negative feedback mechanism because the end result is opposite to the initiating stimulus the end result is opposite to the initiating stim initiating stimulus the initiating stimulus was increase so the result is a decrease the initiating stimulus was a decrease and the end result is an increase here all the systems of a uh, homeostasis homeostasis mechanisms are working the baroreceptors are being are working as sensors or detectors then these neurons are functioning as transmitters the vasomotor center is functioning as a processor the signals of the processor are being transmitted through the transmitters again and this the heart and the vessels then they are functioning as effectors so starts with sensors signals to transmitters towards the processor then again through transmitters 
towards the effectors so this this interplay or this interaction between the sensors that are that is starting from the sensors and ending with the effectors it is trying to maintain the level of blood pressure the same system the same system is working from for each and every other uh, component of the uh, body or the for example the nutrients for example the temperature the human body temperature is being maintained a nearly constant level the pH of the human body is being maintained in a nearly constant level and there are thousands of control systems that start working from the genetic level and ends up to the level of organs and system level but all of them are trying to maintain nearly constant conditions in the human body after discussing the negative feedback mechanism let's discuss the positive feedback mechanism in the, the positive feedback mechanism in the positive feedback mechanism the end result is more of the same more of the same most of the control systems of the human body are functioning through the negative feedback system because the positive feedback is also called called a vicious cycle for example if the human body blood pressure decrease and it if it would not be for the negative feedback mechanism and it if it would be for a positive feedback mechanism the blood pressure would be decreased till further and it will if it would be for a positive feedback because it is doing more of the same or the result the result is like the stimulus more of the stimulus rather it is more than it will be more decreased than the uh, initiating stimulus and it will further result in more decrease in initiating stimulus and it will further decrease the blood pressure so in a sense this system is a vicious cycle which will result in death but there are a few uh, exceptions in which the positive feedback mechanism is helping the human body as well there are three main functions three main systems one is the clotting clotting the other is the childbirth and another is nerve transmission when we get a cut in the blood vessels in a cut in the blood vessels through a sharp or something a lot of factors get activated which are making a clot which are making a clot so that the blood oozing from here is stopped so that the blood oozing from here is stopped this is known as a uh, clotting mechanism it works through positive feedback mechanism once a clotting factor is activated by the trauma it will further activate more clotting factors and when more clotting factors will get activated they will activate more clotting factors and they will activate more clotting factors the clotting factors increase in a cascade cascade way and they will get this area plugged so that bleeding from this area is stopped in this uh, example the positive feedback mechanism is exactly helping the human body to restore blood or keep the blood in a sense it is a part of a negative feedback mechanism to restore the amount of blood in the body but for the clot or the clot formation process it is a positive feedback because more of the same is being done 
more of the same if it uh, it's here one plotting factor it is being uh, multiplied into two and here it's being multiplied into four and so on so the positive feedback mechanism is helping here but if this process get activated unduly inside the blood vessel it will even stop the blood flow and a lot of problems can arise like heart attack myocardial infarction you must have heard of the word heart attack it is nothing but uh, a plug formation or a clot formation inside the coronary artery of the human heart similarly the childbirth is also occurring through positive feedback mechanism when the head of the child it pushes against the cervix it is pushing this area and when the cervix is being pushed it starts signals toward the body of the uterus and it will contract more when it will contract more the head of the baby is being pushed more when it is pushed more the, the cervix is stretched more and it will start more impulses towards the body of the uterus and it is being uh, the baby is being uh, pushed more and it will result in childbirth similarly another example of positive feedback mechanism where it is helping us is nerve transmission in the next coming chapters we will uh, study that the when for the transmission of impulses in the neuron sodium must come inside the cell or the neuron when there is a leak of sodium inside the cell it basically changes the potential of neuron when the potential of the membrane changes a lot of other sodium channel opens for example a one entry of one sodium uh, sodium will open channels for three more sodium and it will still change the charge of the membrane and it will further opens a lot of channels for sodium and a lot of sodium will come in and when a lot of sodium comes in and the impulse or the charge in the membrane altogether change then impulse will be carried out or transmission of conduction can be carried out so a process which started with the opening of just one just one leak channel resulted into a complete uh, cascade of uh, opening of the sodium channel and results in the nerve transmission we have discussed a negative and positive feedback mechanism now let's discuss the gain of a negative feedback mechanism gain of the negative feedback mechanism the gain of the system is nothing but it's the effectiveness of the system effectiveness of the control system it simply means how how effective how effective the control system is in maintaining homeostasis or how effective it is in maintaining nearly constant conditions in the body we will discuss it with an example we dis previously discussed the baroreceptor system for controlling the blood pressure if a person has intact has a intact baroreceptor mechanism and his blood pressure is 100 he is being transfused with 2 liters of water his blood pressure will rise only to 125 only to 125 is his baroreceptor system is working but if the same person's baroreceptor system is not working and he is being transfused with 2 liters of fluid his blood pressure will rise to 
rather than 125 so here a correction of at least 50 is being there is a difference of minus 50 between 175 and 125 this correction this correction is being done through the baroreceptor system it is effective in in uh, decreasing the impact of this stimulus on the blood pressure but you see there is still a change of 25 a change of 25 is still occurring here because it is not 100% correct this system is not 100% correct so a change of 25 is still occurring to determine the gain or to see how effective the system is we will put it in a formula known as gain or correction that is correction by error here we see that correction was minus 50 but the error was 25 so it gives us the answer of minus 2 what's the meaning of this, this uh, gain the, it simply means how effective how effective the system is in minimizing the impact of harmful event on the body so for example in this case in this baroreceptor uh, system the system is being able to minimize two portions of the effect two portions of the effect like 50 and just leave one one portion out of three one third of the effect on the human body there are other systems like temperature temperature maintenance systems or pH maintenance system they are more their gains of their system are far more than the gains of the blood pressure system so today our lecture about uh, the homeostasis uh, concludes and here we end uh, um, with the uh, gain and gain of the system to summarize it to summarize this lecture we just need two words two words for the summary of this lecture that is nearly constant through all these processes which we have been discussing the aim of the human body was to maintain nearly constant level of each and every substance nearly constant temperature nearly constant pH nearly constant blood pressure nearly constant level of sodium glucose potassium magnesium and phosphate so that's the end of our lecture. Thanks for watching the video.